This is like Gordon Ramsay's probably most famous dish out of all of his restaurants. Okay, that's fantastic. I was getting ready to like, you know, bash on it if it wasn't good, but no, I can't, I can't do that. What's up everybody, this is George here with Vegas Must Try and today we're here at the Caesars Palace. We're checking out one of the most sought after restaurants here in Las Vegas and that is Hell's Kitchen right behind me. It took us a couple of weeks to get this reservation and the day is finally here, so let's do it. And I'm joined by my cousin, I got Yofit right here. First time for me as well, so I'm really excited to try this food. Look at that life-size guy. Basically like a Disneyland ride. Here on the wall we have all the contestants from the Hell's Kitchen show. Alright guys, so just got situated here and here at Hell's Kitchen, you basically have to make a reservation uh, maybe like weeks or maybe even months in advance, depending on what day and time you want. Like for example, I booked it about two and a half weeks ago and I didn't get my preferred time. I just kind of had to settle for something that fit with my schedule. If you did want it to walk in, you can only do it at the bar here. Aside from that, there isn't a waiting list and you can't make a reservation for one person. I had to do it for two people. Fun fact, Hell's Kitchen was just named the top two most photographed restaurants in the United States by Yelp and it wasn't number two, it was number one. Uh, the number two was actually Bacano as well. So two of the most photographed restaurants in the United States are here at the Caesars Palace. By uh, number one is here at Hell's Kitchen and number two is the Bacano Buffet. So they have kind of like the fire and ice going here and all of the chefs have a red bandana. I believe it was from the show. I never actually got to watch it. So impressions of this restaurant, it's a really nice place. It's nicely well lit. You have nice ceiling here. You have a, a cool display here where the kitchen is. It's like an open kitchen space. You also have a view of the strip. So if you're lucky enough, or maybe if you ask for it, you can sit by the window and you have a really nice view of the strip and also get to see the rest of the restaurant as well. All right, so we just got our drink and this is a notes from Gordon drink. It's a refreshing gin drink. And uh, I'm excited to see what this says. Kind of uh, reminds me of like a Chinese like a fortune. Yeah. yeah. Your What's turkey is so raw, it just shot down a Russian jet. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so those are probably like quotes from the TV show, yeah. right? When he's yelling see, at people. In the so that's pretty neat. I also know that they have like like a smoky drink and other like cool presentations like that. So if you like old fashions, definitely hit up that. No straw though. There's a straw. All right. Oh, this is so good. It kind of tastes like lychee. This is so good. Check it out. Yo, that is... That is so fire, right? It's dangerous. That is good. That is good. Wow. It's like very refreshing. All right, and here we have some starters. We have the foie gras right here. We have some cherries, nuts right here. I think this is an English muffin. And then the actual foie gras up here, which is, I believe it's duck liver. It's a bit smaller than I was expecting, but the presentation is top class. So here we have the steak tartare. A lot of people don't like steak tartare because it's basically raw meat, but it's very high quality raw meat. And then here we have some of like basically caviar, but it's like imitation caviar. That's what they call it. Truffle pearls right here. All right, mix them up. All right, so this is basically a patty right here. Dude, there's like a caveman thing in me that I absolutely love, tartar. I can smell the truffles from here. Yeah. It's like this, like if it was a, a salsa. Like a dip? Yeah, yeah. Ah, there nice. you go. Classy man. Let me get in there. Hell yeah. Mm. I haven't had steak tartare in like months, maybe close to a year. I love the strong truffle flavor. This is fantastic. Very good texture, a lot of complicated flavors. I wish I could get bigger spoonfuls of this, but I would eat it all in one bite. You don't even feel like you're eating raw meat because there's a lot of flavors that really, you know, uh, make it appealing for the slimy texture to be like swallowed. Plus like these little, um, what are they called? Like chips or some sort are, are delicious. They give you, you know, that nice crunch that you're looking for. Oh yes, sir. Oh my God. Get a big one, dude, get a big one. If you gave me like, a gallon of steak tartare, dude, <laughs> I'd go in. It'd be easy to do a carnivore diet if that's what your diet like was made of, but let's do it. Oh, look at this duck liver, super fat. If you wanna like scar yourself, check out how they make um, this foie gras, like the process of what they do to the duck. I think there's also honey in this English muffin. Let's go for a bite. 
I'm gonna get some of the nuts as well. What's the I, review? I love this. Um, <clears throat> if you eat the duck liver by itself, way too fatty. Then you add like some like carb component, like the English muffin, it's good. You add the nut, nice crunch, but then what really, really tops it up are the cherries. You add the cherries to this, it, they're super sweet, but it just brings everything together. It takes it home. Like when you were talking about a lot of flavors here with the steak tartare, this is absolutely nuts. It's a lot smaller than I thought, so maybe like two more bites and it's gone. Yeah. It might get messy because uh, the English soft. muffin is so crummy. Yeah, soft. make sure to get that cherry, dude. It's gonna get fatty. This is a delicious. Someone put duck liver on a cookie <laughs> and said, let's put some cherries on it. Yeah. The only thing fattier than that that I've eaten before was uh, bone marrow. All right, so just a quick observation is that their menu is a bit small, right? There's not a whole lot of things to pick from, although what we've had was fantastic. I would definitely recommend that steak tartare. If you like steak tartare, the foie gras was really good, although I've had better in my experience, but I've, either of those items are gonna be delicious. Now we're waiting, obviously, for the beef wellington. This is probably the most photographed thing on earth as far as food goes, so let's get it going. I have a side of baked mac and cheese, prosciutto yeah. crumbles no gouda. It is very, very hot okay, guys. And then that's like the chicken beef wellington, potato puree, glazed bakery, vegetables. All right, so we went ahead and got the star of the show, and that is the beef wellington. Check this out. This is like Gordon Ramsay's probably most famous dish out of all of his restaurants. So we have some filet steak cooked medium rare. We have a layer of pate and then another layer of pastry, which is obviously cooked in the oven. Not to mention we have potato puree here and some veggies. I was actually expecting it to be a little bit bigger. This is the first time I ever see it in person, uh, but let's get it going, dude. All right, then we also have some mac and cheese here. This looks absolutely delicious but let's get started with the beef wellington. All right, let's go. All right, the bread on the outside, very soft. We're moving to the meat, very tender. Let's go. Check that out. All right, so there's not like an easy way to eat this, you know, it's not like a burger. You have to cut it. Oh yeah. The inside, very tender, super red, the way meat should be. Okay, that's fantastic. That pate layer that it has on the outside is unreal. The composition of the whole beef wellington, it did break apart because, you know, the pastry gets a little soggy with the, with the moisture of the meat. But honestly, it is so delicious. Very tender meat. So anything that's like a, like a tortilla or bread or something like that with a piece of protein, to me, that's an amazing combination. This is creamy, it has a nice bite, really good taste. I was getting ready to like, you know, bash on it if it wasn't good, but no, I can't. I can't do that. Potato petite puree, delicious. Let's try the mac and cheese. Oh, yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. This is a very good mac and cheese. Nice crunchy on top. After trying this beef wellington, I wouldn't expect anything else. This is fantastic. Really, really happy so far. It is good, right? Oh, trying to be a healthy boy? What is that? What, what, what? I think it's a tomato. I'm confused. Tomato? Yeah, I don't it know. It looks like a piece of carrot cut in a circle. I don't know. I know this. This looks like a scallop. Oh. That was cauliflower. Yeah, it was scoops. That's weird. But I respect the creativity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we have made it to dessert, and here we have the sticky toffee pudding, which is what they're known for here is their most popular dessert. Oh, yes, yes, actually here. Thank you guys for recording because it looks really good with the fashion. Ready, yep. Thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Look at that. That's pretty cool. What is this, like coconut ice cream? Shore, yeah, basically. Uh, that's what she said, sorbet. I can't do it. Is this a, it's a real coconut. coconut. Yeah, it's a real coconut. coconut. It's Gordon Ramsay's mom's recipe. Here we have some, what is this, ice cream on top. This is gonna look delicious. Any ice cream and like bread combination is my absolute favorite. Let's go. Dude, get out of here. Jopin. This, it's nuts. 
Dude, it's nuts. I, I don't want to exaggerate, all right? I'll keep it together. This is unreal. Dude, I don't know what type of ice cream that is. Extremely sweet, though. I love super sweet things. I could probably finish that whole thing, but dude, it has a strong, bold, like caramel type of flavor, which is probably the toffee, right? I think it's, I think it's like coconut sorbet here. It's a super cool presentation. They give it to you in an actual coconut. They pour some water here. This I believe there's some dry ice underneath, and it gives it gives you a nice little shell here. Like this is legit a coconut. Coconut shavings on top. We got some pieces here. What is this? Some sort of biscuit or cookie? Yeah, this isn't too heavy. This is a, uh, you know, like sorbet. Sorbet is like a lot more water-based, obviously. This is the most tropical dessert on the Las Vegas Strip. This is what Hawaii would taste like if Hawaii had a taste. This is nuts, baby. What a dude, what a meal. The actual coconut? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, it's coconut. Yeah, it is coconut. It is coconut. <laughs> 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 Did you know coconuts kill a lot of humans per year? You're just walking around on the beach and then a coconut hits your head and you die? Death by coconut. All right guys, so that is a wrap up here at Hell's Kitchen. The food was delicious and I definitely recommend this place. I did think, however, that the food was a bit overpriced, but uh, to be honest, like that's Vegas and you come into a celebrity chef, it's basically one of the biggest restaurants in Vegas. So with all that being said, don't forget to make a reservation because you have to like book weeks or months ahead. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found any value in this video whatsoever, please remember to give this video a like, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and then comment down below questions, comments, concerns, or you know, where other restaurant you think I should feature in this channel. Thank you guys and I'll see you on the next time. Peace.